beginning of our um, event this afternoon, um, it was really great to hear from Auntie Gloria and the, the welcome to country that she gave us. Um, what a brilliant tradition that we've got in our country now where the traditional owners um, give us permission to stand on the land that um, we have invaded so long ago. She made a, um, a reference to a, a song that um, many of you may know, um, I Am Australian. Do, can we have a show of hands? Of who knows that? But I am Australian, you're Australian, we're all Australian. Um, there's a, a couple of lines from that song that, um, that came to my mind when she mentioned that. Um, everyone knows Judith Gar Durham from The Seekers, I hope. Um, she sings this beautiful, um, she's got a beautiful voice and, and sings this amazing two lines about a, um, she being the daughter of a digger who sought the mother load. Um, the girl became a woman on a long and dusty road. And this, this line that, um, that Bruce Worsley has, these lines that Bruce Worsley has written, um, harken back to the gold rush. But I, I wonder in many ways, um, so the 1850s, we're now in the, in the, well into the 21st century, and in rural Australia, there are a lot of young women and men who are growing up on long and dusty roads without access to a decent education. Back in the 1980s, we were um, told by the, the Hawke government that we would have, um, that we would become the clever country, that money was going to be invested in education and that we were all going to become very smart and, um, and take over the world. Um, but it, there's been a lot of things that have happened in the meantime, a lot of factors that have intervened, politics being one of them, um, and, and changing demographics and, and, and universities being combined together. And, and what that's meant in the regions is that most campuses that were once independent institutes have now been merged into um, central universities. And these are largely um, urban-based, and while we're being told to trim the fat in our, um, so to speak, financially, in our, in our rural campuses and our regional campuses, um, we see massive building projects going on all around the country in urban universities. It's an interesting um, correlation that we can make that um, double the number of young people in urban centres aspire to go to university. So between six and seven out of ten young people in urban centres uh, have the ambition of going to inter-tertiary study of some form. Um, in regional and rural areas, um, that can be as low as three out of ten. So we've got a concern here. Um, if our regions are going to be, remain sustainable, then we need to invest in education in our, in our region. Outside of these of this amazing building, the, the, the Cube and the, the Bunby Regional Entertainment Centre. We have people that are working in our community very hard to support and make our community sustainable. And um, as Rebecca mentioned, we have um, a campus, uh, a rural campus, regional campus, here in Bunbury, um, which is part of a three-campus university, two of which are urban-based, um, two campuses are urban-based. So rather than relying on government, what we need to do as, a, a uni as any sort of regional university needs to do is to reach out. Um, we can't be the hallowed halls of academia. We can't keep the knowledge um, and be lauded for the research that we do if we're not engaging with our communities, if we're not going out and, and doing some work um, with the people that are in the communities that are supporting us and making ourselves relevant. It's so important that... Um, that we get to uh, keep our university campuses in the region. The majority of students that um, go to regional campuses are usually mature age students. And that, that often gives the impression um, on paper that these campuses aren't necessarily as good as the ones in the city um, and in other in urban centres around Australia. Um, and I would argue that that's not actually the case. Coming to a regional campus, um, such as uh, Bunbury, and this is not a, an advertisement, but I do have a stall set up outside if you'd like to sign up for a course, um, is that you actually have smaller classes, you have a, a, a beautiful campus um, in natural bush settings um, 
We even have the kangaroos. After the students go home, we have kangaroos come in and sit on our lawns. And um, then we have a man come around in the morning, clean up the mess that they've left behind at night time. Um, so it's a really friendly place. Um, an amazing international experience. Perhaps we're not targeting um, our university campuses and our regions um, quite widely enough. I spent uh, seven years doing my PhD part-time. Um, so I was working full-time, um, so I wasn't um, sitting back um, living off the taxpayer, just so you know. Um, but uh, but it, was, it was something that uh, I invested a lot of time in. And at the end um, of my degree, I thought, what can I, um, what, who's going to read this? It, it's 100,000 words. Um, it's going to go into a library, and no one's ever going to read it. So what I need to do is get out there and practice what I preach. I need to be on the coalface. Um, I need to be part of the solution. Um, so my partner and I packed up and left Sydney, and we went up to Darwin, and, um, and we worked with people from rural and um, remote communities. And I saw some of the uh, greatest poverty that I've seen in my life um, really uh, challenged my, my views of the world. I saw towns that didn't have high schools. Um, I saw towns uh, where children would have to go off to boarding school if they were going to get an education. And, um, and, and, and that is um, an indictment, I think, on, on us as a society. Having moved to the southwest, um, and where else would you live? The southwest is amazing. We've got the bush, we've got the sea, we've got the wine, we've got the food, we've got the wine. Um, it's a really great place, um, and a place where people are warm and welcoming. Um, no one's thrown tomatoes at me yet, so I think it's um, a friendly town. Um, but we have some people who are marginalised in regional areas, in rural areas, people who may not fit in. Um, it's nice to follow Heather because um, her, her talking about inclusion um, is something that is really dear to my heart. Um, since I've been living in, in Bunbury, um, I've been involved with working with some youth um, who are, um, would identify themselves as marginalised. Um, working with um, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender youth in, in our region. And how amazing is it to be able to do that in a regional town um, where in most regional towns those sort of services aren't available for young people. But here we have a model of best practice that we can put forward to the rest of the country and say, hey, look, we're doing this here in the southwest. This is really good. Um, why don't you try and do it too? Why don't we create um, an inclusive Australia? It's, um, it's remarkable that um, in, in a regional area, um, and as Andrew pointed out on his map where we are, um, so isolated from a major, a major town and the most isolated major city in the world, um, that it's, t it's a long way to go if you need help with anything. It's dis the tyranny of distance. It's that long and dusty road um, that Judith Thoram sings about so well. And and so we need to make sure that our, our communities are sustainable, that our young people are going to aspire to live in our regions, that they're not going to drift off to the cities, that there is a life here for them, no matter who they are, no matter what they do, no matter how they feel or who they love, that our town is a place where they feel comfortable and they would like to stay, where they would like to study, and that they can become the best people that they can possibly be. We have an investment um, as a university, as individuals, as a community, in making sure that everyone in our community feels safe and welcome. And without the support of a university, um, uh, young people are going to leave. They, aren't, they, they may not come back, they may. People may come or go. But, but it's important that rather than looking to government for all the solutions, that as a community we work together and that the university reaches out, um, and I know staff at the university who are on boards and all sorts of things, unsung heroes, um, who, are, who, are, who are doing um, amazing work, um, battling against perhaps what is a, a tide um, that may increase with um, deregulation deregula of um, universities in Australia. And we need to make sure um, that no matter what happens with government funding, that as a community, we work together um, for, the, for the benefit of all of the young people that um, we would like to see stay here, um, your children, your grandchildren, um, 
and make our community the best place it can possibly be. Thank you.